Dr. Waj Khan, Top Gun Dental Implant Study Club. So today we have a patient who presents to the office with a maxillary left lateral incisor which is broken at the gum line. This is a fi picture of it. So what we're going to be doing for this patient is extracting this tooth and providing them with an immediate implant. Immediate implants present themselves with a number of challenges. So in this particular case here, we're going to try to get this tooth out without fracturing the buckle plate. We're using here a Woodson elevator, which you can purchase from either Premier or Euphredi, an excellent instrument to uh, detach the periodontal ligament from around the tooth. As you can see, that's what I'm trying to do here. Some of the other challenges that present with immediate implant dentistry are some of the aesthetic challenges, healing challenges, predicting ridge resorption, temporization, and hard and soft tissue defects. So some of the principles that are required here are atraumatic extraction, absence of infection or pathology, adequate soft tissue coverage. In this case, we're going to use platelet-rich fibrin, or in this case, we're uh, unable to uh, get blood. As you can see here, I'm using a 76S forcep. This is one of my favorite forceps we're taking teeth out. It's got these beautiful small beaks that engage the root, and when we extract it, we'll show you a picture of how uh, this actual forcep engages the root. So continuing along, adequate soft tissue coverage. So uh, in this case, we're going to try to use PRF. I was unable to get blood out of this patient, so what we're going to be using in this case is just a call-up plug uh, along with some bone graft. Uh, ensuring that you have an intact buckle plate is also important in these cases for immediate implants. Uh, ability to get primary stability. So try, in this case, we're going to try to engage that dense, thick, cortical palatal bone. And lastly, a plan for the gap and jump junction. As already mentioned, we're going to pl place a bit of a bone graft uh, inside this patient here. So as you can see, we're using the 76 for, 76S forcep to try to remove this tooth, and it comes out in nice one, one nice piece. In a, a photograph here, you can see how that 76S forcep holds that tooth really nicely. You use a periodontal probe to sort of uh, assess how long that tooth is and get an idea of how past how much past the apex of the bone uh, we need to engage in order to get primary stability. We use the periodontal probe also to ensure that the buccal plate is intact. And here I'm going to use a curette to basically curette out any remnants of periodontal ligament, any pathology which is present in this patient's case. So using our implant precision drill, we're going to start in a position which is going to be at the, at the labial and move it more towards the palatal. And the purpose of this is to try to engage that dense palatal uh, bone uh, for primary stability. We take a pin and take a radiograph to ensure that we're going in the proper direction. And the pin also, in this occlusal view, will show you that we have a screw retained position for this implant. Continuing along with your favorite assortments of implant drills, progressively moving from the pilot drill to the 2.8 uh, to the 3.4 uh, millimeter in this case. We're using an implant direct uh, Legacy 1 implant here. This implant is very similar uh, to the Zimmer tapered screw gun. It's actually invented by Jerry Nisnik, who, uh, through his company, as you can see here, has a number of uh, widths, uh, 3.7, 4.2, 4.7, 5.7. They even have a 7.0 available, not in the Legacy 1, but in their product assortment. Uh, we place this implant and we are able to get primary stability in a screw retained position at 30 newton centimeters torque. Now, uh, torque does not correlate to uh, lateral stability. As you can see, there is a gap jump junction. So the plan for the gap jump junction here is after placing the cover screw for the patient to place a allograft uh, bone graft material and then cover it. In this case, ideally, we would like to have used platelet rich fibrin. Uh, we were unable to venipuncture this patient, so in this particular case, uh, we just used a standard collar plug with a figure eight silk suture. Uh, we send the patient off for a week. We take the suture out in about a week's time. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention, uh, for temporization, in this particular case, we had made an impression of the patient in advance and made this little SX retainer, added some composite to it so the patient can wear it uh, as a temporary. The patient comes back in a week, we remove the su silk sutures. Uh, six to eight weeks later, we bring the patient back for a stage two procedure. We perform a roll flap uh, along with a horizontal mattress suture uh, to retain the connective tissue and the buccal aspect to give us a nice emergence profile and a nice three millimeter uh, straight or contoured healing abutment. Patient comes back, you can take a fixture level impression of this implant for the patient. As you can see, we are in a screw retained position. The patient will come back once the lab's fabricated that crown, and you can insert that, and it goes really nicely for the patient. And uh, whatever follow up you're going to perform, and in this particular case, we brought the patient back after a week just to make sure that everything was good.